Hey, uh, I'm going to do a little project today. Uh, I'm going to make some throw lines for catfishing. And uh, some of you fishermen out there probably are familiar with these. But I'm going to explain this process for those that aren't. Uh, and then I'm just going to make, uh, make up some 60 foot throw lines. Throw lines, this is set line string here. And I'll tell you what a set line is. Uh, as soon as I tell you what a throw line is. Uh, throw lines are mostly, most often used for catfishing because catfish uh, hunt along the bottom for all their bottom feeders, basically. So, uh, using these or several of these, you increase your chances of catching catfish because you don't have to stand there and, and wait on catfish to show up. You just throw the line in hook the other end on something stationary like a big rock or a tree or, or even pound something into the ground and, and loop the string around it. Uh, and if you, have, if you use a fishing rod, you can only use one line. I guess you could bring multiple fishing rods, but these are just too simple and easy. And uh, a set line is similar to that, but it can be used for any type of fishing. And a set line, all you do is, uh, you almost have to be in the water to, to be successful at set line fishing, but you can be on the bank and uh, basically you just tie a string around a stump or a tree or something like that and throw it in and the hook can be at any level, whatever level of fish you're biting. Those are more often used for any type of fish. Uh, they can be used for catfishing. And throw lines could also be used for any type of fish, but more often than not, they're used for catfishing. And uh, I can't think of anything else to tell you about that, but I'm going to show you how I make them. And uh, there's just a couple things to keep in mind when you cut this string. You want to melt the end so they don't unravel. This I got at Walmart. It was uh, like eight and a half bucks for uh, 486 feet. That's 235 pound test. You probably don't need it that heavy. And the only reason you might need heavy string like this is, is uh, when you fish on the bottom, the hooks tend to get hung up on stuff when you go to bring it back in. So uh, if you go to tug it on this string, you'd rather have the hook bend or break than lose your string. So. Uh, I get started. I'll show you the pattern. I'm going to draw a pattern out here on a one by four, and uh, cut a little handle to wrap this around. I'm going to do four of them. And, uh, when I get one made, I'll show it to you. Here's the basic pattern. It's uh, 12 inches from here to here. From here to here is five inches. And to get these, all I did was put a can up here and trace around it. This is where I'll wrap the string. These will be cut out and I'll wrap the string around here. Uh, I'm going to cut this out and get it sanded up and kind of shaped up nice and uh, get the string on. Well there's one. The thing I like about working with wood is you can sand out your mistakes. Uh, got three more traced out here. I'm going to cut these out and get them sanded up like that and uh, go to measuring out oh, about 65 feet of string on each one of these. And the reason I say 65 feet is because it would be really hard to throw it out any further than that. Uh, you know, maybe if you were standing on a bridge and you wanted to drop them down in the water, but by the time you reeled in 65 foot of string your fish would have figured out a way to get off or wherever it was hooked you'd have pulled it out so I figure 65 feet's about enough. Alright I'll cut these out and get right back with you. Alright there's four of them. Now I'm going to take my uh, tape measure outside and my string and uh, I'm going to measure off uh, four times 65 feet and uh, come in here burn the ends and uh, hook them on there. What I'm going to do is run the string through these holes and then tie a knot 
on the other end. I got holes drilled in all of them, so. All right, let's get started with that. Alrighty. Now we got 65 feet on this tape measure. And, uh, and there's Breezy. And there's the girls. Hello, Rocky. Hello, Rocky. Y'all enjoying your cantaloupe? All right, I got them done. Uh, let me find one. There we go. That's how I did that. Tied a knot and uh, hit it with some heat so it'll melt and not come undone. Now I've got one inch, one ounce weights. You know what? I may have to. I might have to drill them out a little bit to get that string through there. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I will. So I'm going to go do that and I'll be right back. And then, uh, let's see here. These are the type of hooks I'm going to use. They have, uh, they're already made up. And the reason I'm going to use these is because you can just loop. I'll show you how I do this. It's, it's hard to explain. But you can replace these easy when they break, and they will break. And uh, where I'm going to be fishing, the catfish are not that big, so a smaller hook would work. I have some some bigger hooks. If uh, you know, if I ever get to fish in our bayou down here, uh, some of the catfish are you know 20, 25 pounds, so you'd want a bigger hook, maybe even a treble hook. All right, uh, I'm going to drill them one ounce weights out to accommodate that string and I'll be right back. All right, I got my ends melted. I got my weight drilled out or the string will fit in there. And I just thread this. Tie a couple of good knots here. One more good knot. All right. Now, what I do, I take a lighter and I heat up that knot. So it'll sort of stick together and not come undone. And then I just melt the end of it off. And then, take a little bit of Gorilla Glue. And uh, I just put some on this knot here so it won't come undone. Now, don't need a whole lot. You just don't want come undone because undone, uh, this is that polyethylene string and it's real slick. Alright, I'm going to do that to uh, all four of these and then I'll show you how I put the hooks on. Alright, I've got my weights all attached and the ends burned off and and uh, the knots gorilla glued. Uh, I'm gonna let that dry a minute but I wanted to describe a couple other methods of fishing to you. Uh, this method that I just made it's called a throw line and you can have as many as five hooks on it. Uh, there's also another method called a trot line and I'll describe it to you. Let's just say you had a stream and uh, a tree on this side and a tree on that side and a trot line is just a line that is attached to a fixed object on either side of this uh, bayou stream river and you have multiple hooks coming off of that and uh, I think there's a maximum of 50 in Texas I think there's a maximum of 50 that's called a trot line there's another method called a jug line let's just say you're in the water and looking at uh, the bayou this way and a jug line, it's called a drifting jug line too. Let's just say you had a milk jug or something floating in the water and to the bottom of it you had a line with a hook. And you can have multiple hooks. I think five is the limit on those. And there's another thing called a yo-yo. Uh, 
and I've never heard of them anywhere else but here in the south and what it is is let's just say here's the bayou and here's a, a tree coming up beside the bayou or here in Louisiana the trees are in the bayou and they have little cypress knees coming up out of the water uh, you would take a branch and there's this contraption called a yo-yo it's a spring-loaded device that does look similar to a yo-yo and you pull on it and pull a hook down into the water, baited hook, and when a fish bites on it, this spring-loaded thing pulls the string up into the yo-yo out of the water. And these you have to check frequently because, you know, a fish doesn't last long out of the water. So you'd set 40 or 50 of these and then you'd spend all night going back up and down the bayou checking your yo-yos. And uh, I'm going to shut this off. I'm going to hook my throw line up, put a, put a, a hook on it, and uh, I'll show you how that's done. Okay, I'm going to show you how I put... Oh, you're going to get hooked, dog. I almost caught a Lucy. You got to move, sweetie. Move. <laughs> okay, uh, what you do is just loop this, and I want to go about a foot above the weight. Loop it. You put that loop through this loop. You take the weight, put it through that loop, and there, your hook is hooked. And you can undo this, you can move it up, you can move it down, and when you're pulling this out of the water and it gets hooked on a stump or something like that, you can give this a real hard pull and it'll snap this and not your string. So uh, there's a throw line. You can put four or five of them up here, but the more you have, the harder it is, the more careful you gotta be to throw it out in the water. So uh, I would rather use one and then four or five throw lines instead of multiple hooks on throw line because it's so close to you when you throw it out. Alright, that's all I can think of. Uh, I don't have my fishing license or I'd go down there to the bayou and show you how this gets thrown out because there is a method to it. Uh, I'll explain it to you. you. You unwrap the amount of string you think you're going to use. If you want to throw it out 30 foot, you unwrap 30 foot. And you string it out on the ground where it's not going to get hooked up on anything when you throw it and you take the end of it, first of all you gotta put this on the ground put your foot on it so when you throw your string in it doesn't take the whole thing in and then you take your hook and you give it a couple of swings and you toss it out there and uh, if there's any slack left you uh, tie it back up and then you can get a piece of stick or a rebar and just whatever you've got on the bank just loop the string around the stick or whatever you can poke in the ground so it doesn't take off when you get a bite. That's it. Thank you for watching.